Okay, here it is. See that cheese coming up through there? I put the sauce I made on one end and the other end has no sauce. I took a paper towel and sopped up some of the grease from around the edges. Um, I've never been able to make a meatloaf without some kind of... <laughs> um, oh, grease! I can't even talk. Uh, so that's the cheese coming up through there. Sometimes it comes through, sometimes it doesn't, but it makes it really delicious. And I always serve uh, mashed potatoes, not instant mashed potatoes, real mashed potatoes with meatloaf. And so I'll do a video on that after a while. Hey, so um, my sister passed away a week ago today. Um, it was uh, it was awful. Um, I'm a nurse. I think I've said that before, and I've helped you know families, and I've watched patients die, and I've tried to bring dying patients back to life. I've been on every aspect of it. Um, but never, not one time, did I watch my sister die until last week. And she was very sick. She was. She's been sick for a long time. She's chronically sick, and she chronically did not ever take care of herself. She was uh, non-compliant with just about everything. And it started with diabetes, and I try to teach my patients um, diabetes, unmanaged, It'll get your eyes, it'll get your kidneys, it'll get your heart. I mean, it, it just, it attacks all kinds of stuff. So anyway, she wanted to be cremated, so that's where she's at, at the crematorium. And she wants to be planted under a new dogwood tree, which I have the tree. I'm just waiting for the ashes. Um, she got that from me, because I want to be cremated, and I want to be planted under... A new dogwood tree so my family can watch me bloom every year um, one thing about you know doing the cremation thing she did not want a funeral and she did not want a memorial she just wants to be planted under a dogwood tree so I'm from West Virginia and in, it's probably not just solely here um, our culture but I know for a fact that um, Funeral food is a big thing. When somebody dies, you take food. I mean, it's just automatically what we do. But when there's no memorial and there's no funeral, um, there's no funeral food. So I eat my feelings. I eat my emotions. Happy, sad, mad, glad, whatever they are. Uh, so today, um, I'm going to make a meatloaf. And I, I'm going to make it, as soon as I get that cup out of my way, I'm going to make it how my sister made it. And this one's for her. She loved cooking, just like I loved cooking. In her last probably seven or eight years, she didn't do much cooking. She was really sick. But um, here we go. So watch this. So we're going to take some ground beef. This is 80-20 whatever you got. If I can get it out of here. Okay. Boom. So there's that. Then I had some frozen green peppers that were already chopped up, but I wanted them chopped up more. So I put them in my chopper hopper. Onion. I want to chunk it up and put it in the chopper hopper. Yeah, she used to make this meatloaf recipe and she'd take it to work. And well, she'd take all kinds of stuff to work. This was years ago. She was also a nurse. Um, and one particular time, probably just wasn't once, but just one time it sunk in. Hold on. <laughs> Her co-workers loved her food. Like, my co-workers love my food. <laughs> and I love making happy bellies. Um, but my sister, somebody suggested that she open a restaurant, and I'll be damned if she didn't open a restaurant. 
Uh, it was like the mom and pop little diner. I can't remember how long she had it. It wasn't too terribly long because she was still working full time and it was just hard to find people to work that would cook how she cooked. So, she did do it though. She did have a restaurant. Alright, so we got some onion. A little watery. Alright, when my when my son was little, he's 17 now, he would not eat peppers and onions. Like, if he found a piece of anything, he would be like, Bleh. there's salad in here. He still doesn't eat salad, but he does eat that. But anyway, I started using this meatloaf mix back then, and that's all I put in it besides some ketchup and cracker crumbs. So that's just kind of out of habit. If you don't have it, don't use it. Um, we can put some onion powder in here. You can't really, well, I guess you could over season a meatloaf, but um, just don't use funky stuff. Like, don't put no oregano in there. If you want spaghetti, make spaghetti. Paprika, that was garlic powder. Paprika. Gotta have some eggs. I'm going to use three. Boom. And if you don't have cracker crumbs, you can use sal saline. Saline? I'm a nurse. You can use salting crackers. You can use any cracker. I have Ritz crackers. You can use bread crumbs. You can use panko. You can whole slices of bread apart in little tiny pieces, but you need some kind of a binder in here. This part, this is kind of a joint sisterhood thing. This part of the meat life is how I do it. And, um, in the middle part, I'll show you how she Stepped it up a few notches, put a bunch of ketchup in there. Just squirt it in there. All right. So, now we're gonna get in there. We're gonna mix it all up. Squish and turn and <clears throat> do whatever. So, my sister was 60 years old. I'm the baby, 57. She was Girl Scout leader for many, 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 many years. Initially, she did it because she loved doing it. And she had a daughter that was part of it. And her best friend had two daughters that were part of it. But after the girls kind of outgrew it, my sister was married to an asshole. And he, he was twice her age. She was 15. He was almost 30 when they got married. And mom's out of paper for that. But anyway, after the kids grew out of the scout thing, they kept doing it um, kind of on the down low. They didn't really have a troop. <laughs> they just had each other. And they would go camping and they would do all this stuff. But it was acceptable to her ex uh, who was also now dead, um, because it was Girl Scout related, but she really wasn't. There were no Girl Scouts. That was her and her best friend. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Okay, so we're mixing that all up. You can hear John Henry in the background. I have, I have dogs. John, shut up. I just want to rinse my hands a little bit. Okay, this is the part that my sister added to me. Put out some foil, saran wrap, this is wax paper, you know, whatever. 
and put your meat on it. Put the meat down on there. I should say that I have an oven preheating at 350 and I have, I have to use foil pans for stuff like this because I don't like washing up after certain things and meatloaf can be messy. So we're going to make this into a little rectangle. You're supposed to put American cheese on here, but I didn't have any, and I never know what I don't have because there's too many people kicking in this kitchen. So I did have Velveeta cheese, but I remember her saying, don't ever use Velveeta cheese because it just disappears. So we're going to use Havarti. You could probably use shredded cheese. Any cheese, my hands are slippery, any cheese except... Velveeta, although we love Velveeta, but it tends to go away. So we're just going to lay this out here. I don't know, I've heard people go, if I wanted a cheeseburger, I'd have a cheeseburger. Well, you know what? Go make yourself a cheeseburger. I'm making this, I'm making my own funeral food, and I'm making this because this is the way my sister did it. Okay, so I got that on there. And you're gonna roll it up. Just kind of bend it over, squish it. Like a jelly roll. So all right, we've got it all rolled. Get it in a pan. Seam side down, always seam side down. So I'm gonna press it out a little bit so it looks more like a meatloaf and not like a jelly roll. Got that? Okay, meatloafs are known to be greasy. One trick you can do that I did not do is put a layer of bread down and then put your meatloaf on top of it. I wish I had remembered to do that, but I didn't. So, I'll deal with it later. Alright, so on top of it, this gave that a little rinse. On top of it, she puts big squirt of ketchup. Part of, of uh, mustard, but oh, a nice little bit. Hey, y'all. Hey, John Henry. Um, my husband's came home. And some brown sugar. Hello. Pop a cup. Gosh, my dogs don't have any home training. So I just stir that up. Shut up! That is our standard poodle, Rogue. Okay, then we just taste it. It's good. My husband didn't really care for this, so I'm going to leave half of it um, done. He does not do condiments. And honestly, I can't even imagine life without condiments. I have enough to smear the whole thing, but I'm being nice. Okay. That's it. Meatloaf.